Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here from Math, Math and Engineering. I hope you're enjoying our section on SAP 2000. This is a series of introductory videos that we're doing specifically for engineering students in university so that they can uh, grab this evaluation version of SAP 2000 and use it in their statics problems or their steel design problems like we're going to do in this one in order to get 100% really check your answers and study for the final exam. So in this question, we're going to design a truss, okay? And let's take a look at the question. Okay, so we have uh, we actually have a series of dead load and live loads here. They're all concentrated. We have a truss, and we're asked to optimize the member cross sections by choosing HSS sections, making sure the stress ratio is very close to one but not exceeding one. Use factored loads of 1.5 live and 1.25 dead. Cool. So uh, we're going to go over how to do this in SAP 2000. It's not that hard, but it's actually a very kind of cool and um, interesting technique. So we're going to start by going to File, New Model. All right, and we're going to go to Grid Only. So uh, for the grid line, we have 13 grid lines. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, we have two grid lines in Z and only one in Y. Uh, for X, we have 1.5 spacing and 1.5 spacing for Z. Okay, and that's going to bring this up. Let's go to the XZ plane. All right, so now um, this is where this question starts to differ from the other questions that we did. Because in the other questions, what we did is we defined uh, our own properties for this section because all, all we cared about really was the cross-sectional area. In this one, we're actually designing it with, act with real sections, uh, hollow sections, hollow square sections. So we're going to need to go ahead and um, have SAP do it for us. And what that means is we're going to have SAP, based on the loads, select the most efficient cross-sectional area for each member. So how we do that, and let's go ahead and first let's define our materials. So we're not really given any material information in this question. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to add a new material and I'm just going to add this uh, this ASTM standard steel here. Um, if, if the steel is indicated, go ahead and, and use something else. I'm going to press OK and I'm just going to modify that. Let's call that steel. Um, as you can see here, we do want to include the dead weight of the steel in this question. Okay, um, so we're going to leave that. Everything else is okay for now. Let's press OK. So now that we have our material defined, now it's time to get SAP to, um, we're going to tell SAP to select a section for us. And we're going to do that by importing a new property. Okay, so um, as you can see, this question wants us to use HSS sections. Okay, cool. So we're going to use, our, we're going to go to tube, and this is going to come up. Okay, so this is a, a series of different libraries that are, you know, um, available for different countries, Russia, Nordic, India, European. And these are all different kind of standards, different uh, available sections in those countries with the dimensions that uh, are specific to those codes in those countries. Okay, so um, I'm, I just want to show you, and this is actually going to be in the, this is going to be in the description down below. This is a couple of the, uh, this is from the SAP 2000 website. This is a couple explanations of what these are. So this is European steel shapes, for example. CISC is Canadian Institute's um, shape. So we'll use that one because I'm Canadian. If you're American, you might want to use this. Depending on, you know, what the question asks or where you're from, depending, you know, this is the, for example, the ninth edition, the 10th edition. We're just going to use the general one here for this question. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. We're going to use the Canadian standard, and this is going to come up. Okay, so we're going to select our steel material that we defined, and nothing special about that steel, just standard steel. That's not really the point of this question. And what we need to do is, um, if you want to select a specific type of section here, um, you can, like a specific range. I'm going to select all of them. So how you do that is you go down here, okay, and you click, hold down shift, left click, from, uh, so you're highlighted on the top, you go to the bottom and press OK. So now that we've done that, we've, we've gone ahead and we've imported all of these sections uh, into our fra frame database. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a new property. Okay, so this new property, okay, we're going to have a frame section property type of steel. We're going to click on auto select list. So let's go ahead and click on auto select list. And you're going to see that this section comes up, okay? So the section comes up and we're going to go ahead and we'll name this um, frame members doesn't matter what you name it. And now, as you can see, these all these sections that we imported, these hollow sections, are on the left here. And what we want SAP to choose from, we're going to go ahead and move those to auto selections. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the top again, and I'm going to import all of these to the, to the auto selection. So SAP, what SAP's going to do is it's going to go through all of these sections, okay? And it's going to simply take a look um, at the loads, and it's going to choose the ones that are closest to one for the stress ratio that it, that it can. 
with it with it being safe. So uh, now you actually you can select which starting section you want uh, SAP to take a look at. Do you want it to start from the middle or from the bottom? I'm going to go from the smallest possible section. So I'm just going to go and select that one. Uh, you can depends whatever you want to do. Um, uh, this one wants us to be the most efficient, so I'm going to start from the smallest, and I'm going to push OK there. And uh, now that's done. So let's go ahead and start to draw our truss. So we can go ahead and go to our section, and we're going to go to frame members. And remember, that's the one that we auto did the auto select. And let's go ahead and start here, and we'll start just drawing that truss of equilateral triangles. Okay. Okay, cool. So now let's go ahead and now that the truss is done, let's assign our supports. So we have a pin support at this point here. And we have a roller over here. And now let's go ahead and put the loads in. So as you can see, we have two different loads. We have dead load and live load. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to need to come over to define. We're going to go to load patterns. And we have our dead load here with a self weight multiplier of one. Okay, we're going to add a new load pattern. Okay, so we're going to add a new load pattern. We're going to want to add a live load pattern. And the live load doesn't have a dead weight. Okay, live load does not have dead weight. Only the dead, dead load has a dead weight. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add that new live load pattern. We're going to press OK. And we can go to define and we're going to go to load combinations. Okay, so we're going to add a new combo. Okay, so we can call that uh, combo one. All right, that's a linear, yes. And now we're going, now what we can do is we can add our dead load and our live load, okay, accord, and we can, uh, you know, change the factor uh, according to what, what, whatever country or whatever code that we're using. So for this one, we're going to do 1.25 dead, and it's linear and static. And then we're going to go to the live, but we want 1.5 for the live. And we're going to go to add that and press OK. So now we have our combo one. Very good. That's all ready to go. And let's press OK. Now we can go ahead and start to add our forces. So let's go ahead and click on the top cord here and let's click all of these and let's add the dead load. Then we'll add the live load and then we can analyze this uh, structure. So let's go to live lo join loads. We're gonna go to forces. Okay, we have uh, force in the Z. We're gonna do the dead load first. So we have 30 add to existing loads. Okay, so those are dead loads. Now let's go ahead and select all those again. Let's go to assign joint loads forces. Now we're gonna go to the live. Okay, and now we're going to put negative 35, okay, and make sure we're adding it to the existing loads. And this little arrow here, actually, you can toggle through the different load cases that you have. So as you can see in the top left here, it says live, dead, and um, we're pretty much ready to go here. So let's go ahead and let's analyze this structure. Let's run the analysis. We're not going to run the modal analysis, but we are going to run both dead and live cases. So we're going to run both dead and live. Let's do dead plus live. Cool, so we've gone ahead, we've loaded it, and now we can go ahead and let's let's take a look at the truss. So we can take a look at the moment, for example, we have a moment diagram here, uh, not very much moment obviously, but there is some. We can take a look at the reactions, but what we're really looking for, for here is the sections. So what sections did SAP choose, and did we optimize this section or not? So go to the design tab, go to steel frame design, and um, you can go to start design slash check of structure. So we're going to go like that. And what it's going to do is it's going to list all of the sections that it decided to choose for us in this in this member. OK, so um, so it's gone ahead and it's it's actually selected the smallest possible section there for these two middle pieces because, you know, they're under the least amount of strain. And as you can see, everything is either orange or yellow. So it's selected the most optimal sections that it could which is nice. That's exactly what we wanted. Uh, we can also take a look, if we go to design, we can take a look at display design uh, info and we want it to, you know, the ratio colors and the values. And as you can see, all of these values are actually, the, the stress uh, ratios are all very close to one. So after they go past one and they're in the red, that's considered to be a failing, failing member and that's not acceptable. So um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what SAP has done for us. And, you know, we can go over here and finally we can verify that all members passed and they have fa passed the stress capacity check. Cool. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. That's how you have SAP select from a list of sections and uh, how you, um, you know, 
uh, analyze the section, make sure that it's as efficient as it possibly can be. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you're enjoying our videos and you're enjoying our channel, please hit the like and subscribe button. I'm Fred from AF Math, and thank you for watching.